Hello world, X here. Today, we're gonna talk about my expectations versus reality for chemical engineering. If you haven't already checked it out, I also made another video called Things I Wish I Knew About Chemical Engineering. That's sort of a broad overview of the career and things I think new chemical engineers should know before getting into it. So go ahead and check that one out after this one. But in today's video, I'm gonna go into more of my impressions of the industry when I first got into it out of college and uh, sort of my expectation mismatch, maybe we could call it a culture shock that I felt getting into it for the first time. There are a lot of different jobs and career paths chemical engineers can take, but this is probably gonna be the more traditional, typical circumstance for most chemis. So first of all, to all the students who have mastered all of their courses, maybe you're pretty familiar with this book, among others, you mastered thermodynamics, you know how to design a distillation column right out of school. Most of that's not really entirely necessary. Unless you're working for a designing company, you probably aren't gonna have to be 100% focusing on these didactics and super technical details of your chemical engineering coursework. Especially once you get into a manufacturing process or maybe on a plant site, you're really gonna have to have that in the back of your mind sort of as a baseline knowledge that you can go back to later if you really need to, but really you're not gonna be designing distillation columns every day. You might work with them. It's good to have a background understanding of how they work and how they operate and how to solve problems that arise, but you're not gonna have to design something on the spot like you might in a test, for example. So if your professor tells you you need to know this in the real world, it's true, but not exactly in the way that it's taught. Pretty much every problem that comes up, you'll have a good couple days or so to Google it and look back in your old textbooks pull out the Perry's Chemical Engineering Handbook and uh, really take your time to get back into it and relearn what you need to know to solve that problem. Not to mention, as a chemical engineer doing a process engineering role, you're probably not going to design and install a new distillation column. You're just gonna have other people do that for you and then make sure that it's running properly, make sure it comes up smoothly and make sure it's integrated into the chemical process. If you're a design engineer, you'll probably get into designing the distillation column, but that'll be all you do. Pretty much wherever you go as a chemical engineer you're probably gonna be working for a really big company and you're gonna be one tiny little cog in a really really big machine so your design and your engineering is gonna be focusing on one small aspect of this massive system so why does a big old company need an engineer so badly well it's because they can solve problems they're creative and uh, that's one thing that really caught me off guard about the job is how absolutely creative the whole thing is Really, chemical engineering is a bit of an art form when you get down to it. It doesn't matter if you're designing or you're working on quality control or you're doing process engineering. It's all very, very creative. In university, where you have a class and a grade, it just seems like there's only one correct solution to any problem and sometimes only one way to get to that solution. But in the real world, when you're solving real problems, there's always a million and one different ways of doing something. And it's really up to you as, as an engineer to try to find that creative solution. The reason a lot of people think that engineering is not creative is because there's a lot of constraints. If you wanna have any sort of a change to a process, for example, say you're designing a new mixer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's safe, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's affordable, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's a certain size and temperature. These are all parameters that constrain you and your design, and they'll often push you towards a certain direction. Contrary to popular belief, constraint actually helps us discover new ideas and think more abstractly and more creatively to solve problems. I recently read a really cool book called Inside the Box, and the concept is that we actually get more creative when we're constrained in a design process. We actually are forced by our constraints to think more creatively. If you think outside the box, and there are no constraints, you're less creative. Imagine having a blank canvas and a bunch of paint and being told to make something beautiful. It's really hard to be creative, at least for me, in that sort of environment. So one thing that really shocked me was just all the different ways that we could actually go about solving a really technical problem. Something that seemed like it should only have one solution, every different person has a different opinion on how it should be done. Going back to that mixer example, Go ahead and look up impellers and baffles and uh, you'll just see how many different creative crazy ideas can go into something so simple. And that's one thing that really shocked me in the industry is having just so many different ways of solving any given problem. Especially when you bring a lot of engineers together, they all have a different idea of what is the best solution to any given issue. So in a room full of solutions, how do you as an engineer get your creative idea across and get the resources and the funding and the support to make sure that your project is successful and it actually happens. 
Well, you're going to have to be a salesman. A lot of chemical engineers go into sales jobs, but that's not what I'm talking about. Just about any engineering job, you're going to have to sell your ideas, probably to upper management or the people with the money, especially if you're a new engineer. New engineers are going to have to bring more data, better design, better project plans, more sensible projects, and uh, all around, they're going to have to do a lot more jobs selling their ideas and selling their creative solutions. So going back to the mixer example, say you found the perfect impeller for the job, well, you're gonna have to advocate that to the people who have the money and the people who make decisions. You're gonna have to sell it to them with data, a good design, a good project plan, maybe a really beneficial cost with a good net present value. You're gonna have to bring that all together and sell it to someone if you want it to happen. You might have to network, you might have to work with different stakeholders and convince different people that it's what makes sense. Another thing salesmen are really comfortable with is rejection. So don't be surprised if you get a lot of no's before you get your first yes on a creative project. And that might just be the one that makes your reputation. On the topic of pushing your projects, there's another really big hurdle to any of your projects or creative solutions, and that's bureaucracy. You thought the DMV was bad? Well, go ahead and try to install a new pipe in just about any chemical plant, and then come back to me. Practically speaking, installing a new pipe material is pretty darn easy just about anywhere you go. However, depending on the process, the price of the product that you're working on, the safety concerns that are involved, and maybe environmental issues that could come up with the process fluid, you're probably gonna have to deal with a lot of paperwork to make sure that that's not gonna cause any issues. There's a lot of downstream consequences that us engineers have to think about, especially if you're working at a big company, anything you change is gonna require a stack of paperwork and maybe five or 10 managers to approve it then maybe 50 other stakeholders and individuals to actually purchase it and install it properly in the right time frame. So the reason for all this bureaucracy and the reason it might be really hard for you to do something that seems really simple is because with any chemical process, there's gonna be a lot of risk. There's gonna be a lot of risk to the environment, people's health, to a budget. So with each of those risks, you're gonna have engineers who are responsible for keeping those under control and making sure that they don't go awry. With a lot of engineers, you've got a lot of people, and with a lot of people in a system, you've got a bureaucracy. It's 100% necessary, but it definitely slows things down. So you might think that this bureaucracy is an issue for you in your project right now, but maybe tomorrow you'll be in one of those roles helping mitigate risk of other projects. So think of this as a career opportunity for you, and think about how you might be able to fit in some of these other positions. But aside from all that, this career is anything but boring, especially if you're working at a process facility, manufacturing a product that's important, you're gonna be really, really close to the money and the revenue stream for that company. If anything goes wrong, or if anything bad happens to the process, it's gonna really be noticeable to you and your team. If a continuous process, for example, shuts down, or maybe a batch process is having some yield issue, everyone and their mom is gonna to wanna to be trying to find the solution to that problem as soon as possible, because every minute that goes by is another couple thousand dollars out the door. Sometimes a day can be a million dollars, depending on what you're working on. So if a particular process makes a million dollars a week or a couple thousand dollars an hour, you can just imagine the amount of pressure behind keeping that thing up, keeping it running, and making sure it has good production. So let's go back to the mixer example. After all of your creativity, your salesmanship, the bureaucracy, all the paperwork, all the management approvals, and all the different risk analysis, the manufacturing of the machine, to the production of it, to the shipping, and finally to the installation. It's all gonna take months, maybe even a year, and it's all gonna lead up to this great big moment where you turn it on. And that's the moment of truth. That's really when you find out if your big idea was worth it. If you get it right and your creative idea makes the process better, there is nothing more satisfying than that. If you get it wrong and it makes things worse or it doesn't work, there is nothing in the world more disappointing. So I want you to just keep that idea in mind that, you know, there's a lot of pressure behind these things. So this career, especially on the process side, is really unique in that it's such a roller coaster. You'll never have such high highs or such low lows when dealing with this sort of thing. On the flip side of that, you're going to have some really great celebrations when things go right and you do solve problems because the reward is immediate. All right, that's it for me today. That's just all the things I could think of right off the top of my head 
from when I first got into it. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and if you have any funny stories, go ahead and uh, like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you later.